In this episode of the Lead Machine Growth Show, Dominic Rubino shares essential strategies for optimizing business operations and time management to enhance your profitability and uh, have more time to be with your family. He's going to share some actionable insights to transform busy work into profitable ventures, which I'm sure you're going to be interested in. I certainly am. And learn effective techniques to manage your time as efficiently as you manage your business. So don't miss out on the expert advice and stay tuned for some, some free gifts from the guest. Welcome to the Lead Machine Growth Show, where you will discover how to tackle your tech, master your message, and design your dream. Paul Guyed, the mastermind behind the Lead Machine, introduces you to Trailblazers who inspire you to implement life-changing solutions and systems you can model to nurture your leads and get your offers seen by your ideal clients who will invest in themselves and you. Be sure you visit our website at www.leadmachinegrowthshow.com. While you're there, subscribe to us via your favorite network. Now, tune in and get ready to transform your vision into reality. Welcome to the Lead Machine Growth Show. I'm Paul Guyon, your host, Lead Machine Coach, and the founder of the Lead Machine Mastermind and Marketing Agency, and I'm dedicated to helping you tackle your tech, master your message, and design your dream. So whether you're just starting out or taking your business to the next level, let's get this conversation started and turn your dreams into reality. Some people like to tinker with cars, but Donick Rubino, and am I saying that right, Dom? Yeah, Dom. Everybody just calls me Dom. Dom. Hey, Dominic Rabino likes to tinker with businesses so they run smoothly and perform well and are fun. He's a serial entrepreneur and a business coach of over 25 years. He's mastered the art of turning complex business environments into profitable ventures across diverse industries, including construction trades, pharmaceuticals, and real estate, which is an interesting combination. Before he was 49, uh, Dominic has bootstrapped and sold two multi-million dollar international companies, and he continues to share his wealth of knowledge through his podcast, The Profit Tool Belt and Cabinet Maker Profit Systems, offering invaluable insights and practical advice to thought leaders in the industry. And I'm sure that you can take away some of that, even if you're not in that industry. Uh, he's a proud family man, and I, I uh, admire that. He's a self-proclaimed horrible fly fisherman. We'll oh, get to I'm the that. worst. Yeah. <laughs> and Dom's engaging stories and straightforward uh, tips ensure listeners walk away with real strategies that you can put into place today. So he's got a commitment to provide more just in theory. He's, he's uh, actually walks the walk, talks the talk, and expect to gain some tools that can be applied within the next 24 hours. All right. Well, Dom, right. thanks for coming. I appreciate you being on the show. Uh, let's, let's, uh, Let's just, why fly fish? I mean, if you're so horrible at it, why do you do it? <laughs> do you, yeah, well, I appreciate you saying that. So I do love fly fishing. Okay. And in my mind, it's, if, first of all, I don't talk when I'm fly fishing, which is very different than everything else I do oh. because I'm an entrepreneur <laughs> and a business coach and I'm always, and a podcast host like you. So I'm always talking. Yeah. But when I'm fly fishing, I'm actively doing nothing, but I have to think about the water. I've got to think about the fish. I've got to really get into it. And I love it. And, you know, one of the things I did is I attached that to uh, goals. I, I want to do really cool things. I, I don't know about you, but I don't like, I don't like to have stuff. I like to have experiences. Mm -hmm. And so one of the experiences I put together was with three other friends. Once a year, we go somewhere really cool in the world to go fishing. And so mm -hmm. last year we went fly fishing in Molokai for bonefish. Wow. At, which was really, really cool. And a little disappointing because I didn't catch one. <laughs> But you tried, but I, I tried I, and I loved every minute I'd go back in a heartbeat. Yeah. One of my, uh, one of my friends, a f former, uh, colleague or uh, business partner, actually, he would go dark on, on some, he'd just say, I would take a solitude Saturday and he would unplug and, uh, he's a writer and author and he's got multiple books. And so he would just go into, go interior and turn off all the, all the chatter, all the, all the, uh, yeah. the noise and, and retreat which I think is a really, a really good idea. I think silence uh, once a day is super important. Oh, is it ever? And you know what? I, you, you mentioned that I'm a family man. Yeah. And my daughter, not into fishing at all, but my son is just like me. He just wants to get out and go fishing. And sometimes I just get this urge to go out. We call it going to the bush, going into the <laughs> forest. I just get this urge to get out of town, just get out with the trees, 
it doesn't scare me. It scares some people. I could walk straight up a mountain and over the other side and be happier in a clam. And uh, I, that just gives me energy. So one of the things that you had mentioned, I heard you talking about time management being like brushing your dog. Can you, can you that's, that's an interesting thing. I, I love my dog and uh, I'm sure a lot of our listeners have dogs and, and they brush them. And so how, how do they relate? Well, it's interesting to, to even think about time management as like brushing your dog because too many, you know, and I do this as a business coach myself and all of the coaches on my team, we, we, we work with strong leaders, people who have built their business to the point where it is now, but they want to get to another level and they kind of feel stuck isn't the right word, but they feel like they're not getting the gains they used to. And so we have to come at them with some new logic and sometimes humor helps sometimes, yeah. sometimes it falls flat and I'm okay with that too. But if you, if you use that visual of brushing your dog, you said you have a dog. Yeah. Two. Yeah. Two. Okay. Which one's the furriest, the fuzziest of the two? Well, one's a, one's a mini poodle. Okay. And it doesn't so shed she, much at all. She's curly. The other one is a, a golden. Oh, golden okay. there you go. And yeah. so, yeah, he's, he's hairy. What's his name? CJ. CJ. So let me, let me paint a picture for you. <clears throat> you and your wife are getting ready to go out, but your wife's not ready yet. I don't know if this has ever happened in your house. And so you think, well, I've got a few extra minutes, so I'm going to brush CJ. And so you get out there and you start brushing CJ and he's so happy. No, oh, dad, you're brushing me. Right? So you go brush him and you, you're like, oh my God, I, I can't, I didn't imagine that there'd be so much hair on CJ. So you pull off a ton of hair off CJ, right? And you're still waiting for your wife to come downstairs because sometimes that happens. Calendars aren't aligned. I'm just saying that I see the smile on your face. We're both not going to admit that that happens. No, nope, uh, never. But you decide, hey, I've got a few more extra minutes, it turns out. So I'm going to go in the kitchen and get a glass of water. So you walk into the kitchen to get a glass of water and CJ brushes up against you. And you look down at your pants and you're like, you got to be kidding me. More hair is coming off this dog. <laughs> and the point behind that analogy is time management is never done. It's just like brushing your dog. We have to continually keep at it. And the real key to time management, and if people are, you know, don't do this if you're driving, but time management is really about priority management. That is what it is. Time management is about priority management, which means I have to say no to some things and yes to just one thing. From, from minute to minute, yeah. Yeah, from minute to minute, day to day, hour to hour, or week to week. Yeah. But I have, if I don't control my time, somebody else will. And right now for all of us, somebody else is. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, when we brush, th there is an endless, endless, endless supply of hair. And I'm sure when he's gone, you know, there's still be his hair laying around. In fact, yeah. we have, uh, we have the, the rollers, you know, the, 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 uh, lint rollers, right. we have those in our car doors and we have them in the, in the right. closet. Before we go out, we grab our coats. Our coats are coated with, with animal fur. We've got, we've got uh, three cats and oh uh, gosh yeah you doctor so my wife is a, my wife works in an animal hospital so we, oh, we get, how nice we get lots of uh rescue. I, and he, I have never met your wife but i already know she's a really nice person she's awesome yeah she's, a late, she's the nicest person i've ever met yeah so uh how, that's how, the analogy that's the analogy it's you're you're just never done and so for all of us yeah. they're struggling with time management take comfort in the fact that none of us are ever done but also Put your shoulders back, lift up your chin just a half an inch and take in a deep breath. I need to manage my time. That's, that's that quiet confidence that we bring about through coaching, right? It's knowing, it's changing our mindset to the mindset of success, understanding some of the factors and making them work in our favor. So how do we deal with the hair? How do we, how do we deal with that in, in, in the, yeah, yeah. Uh, under the domain of time management? What are some of your tips? and things that you do teach your coaching clients? Well, you know, it again, it comes down to priority management. One of the very first things when somebody wants to turn around their business, and, it, and I appreciate your intro there because you did your research. I've turned around a number of my own businesses. So I like to say I'm not just a book learning business coach, but I've done it myself. I know you commented it on, I've been in pharmaceuticals and real estate. I saw that you had some background with pharmaceuticals as well. Yeah. Uh, mine were legitimate, by the way, legit pharmacies. Yeah. Mine too. It wasn't, it wasn't uh, anything. Mine was logistics. Logistics on pharmaceuticals. Yeah. So yeah. my, that company, we shipped 500,000 packages a year. Yeah. The point, 
to get back to this is I need a strategic plan. And, and what a strategic plan is, if you can imagine taking a USB stick, you know, those little keys that you could, you know, imagine stuffing it in your ear and downloading your business brain onto one piece of paper. And that one piece of paper, that strategic plan, in, at least in coaching, becomes our boss. We're always looking back on that every quarter, every year. We're looking back, what was the plan that was made uh, back in May of 2024 or May of 2025? And, and we're always shoulder checking that plan to make sure that we're on track because those priorities guide what I need to do day to day, which takes me back to time management. There's always going to be a list of things that we need to do every day there, for all of us. Then the more things on the list, the more important a person you are. But understanding what item number one is and attacking item number one is the key. Yeah, that reminds me of... Uh... A conversation. I, I had a, a mastermind group meeting last night and uh, we were talking about wins. We go around the room and talk about our wins and challenges Love and it. opportunities and things yeah. like that. And, and uh, one of them said, oh, I got three clients. I did it. I, she, she said, thank you for, for reminding me to do a grand opening. And uh, that worked great. And I got three clients and they signed up right then and went right then and there. And I got another client, uh, two clients, I think this weekend, uh, and I, and I said, oh, what did you learn for those wins? What did you learn? She goes, when I reach out, I get clients. And she was real happy about it. And, um, and I said, well, so what do, you, what do you learn from that? And what are you going to do with that new knowledge? Yeah. And she said that she was going to record, um, she was going to, going to uh, record some of her training and put them up on her, on her website or whatever. And I said, wait a minute. You just said that when you reach out, you get clients. Isn't that what you're going to do more of? And she goes, ah, yeah, do yeah. more of what works. I think, yeah, I think doing more of what works and, and being, okay, if you're going to sustain your business, you have to have repeat clients and new clients and they have to buy more and more frequently and stay longer. Uh, those are, those are some fundamentals that, that have to be, have to be up there so you can move the needle in those directions. Isn't that right? Yeah. So, yeah. uh, I totally get it. Are there any other tips that you want to leave us before we move on to, uh, to some business operations stuff? Yeah. See what you should never do is give me the microphone. I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to give it back to you because that would be a problem. There's so many. So the thing is, there's lots of tips, but the key is focus. Yep. You know, you need to have a strategic plan. You need to understand your priorities. And these are the things strong leaders are always pulled in a million directions. Yeah. Strong leaders are always pulled in a million directions, but it's the ability to calm your mind and focus on the thing. That really help. Totally. So what do you do when a business or business owner tells you that they're busy, but they're losing money? Mm. I ask more questions. Yeah. Right. Because there's, there's a, there are, there are eight profit leaks in a business. Now, as you mentioned, I'm a specialist in the world of construction and contracting. And I appreciate the fact that you didn't laugh when you mentioned the name of one of my podcasts, which is pretty specific, Cabinet yeah. Maker Profit System. Right. Right. I like and, it. I think that's a great niche. And we're, it's, we're looking for yeah. some cabinets uh, <laughs> See? For, for our remodel in our kitchen. So yeah. I totally well, that's a small menu. Sorry, Paul. I can totally relate. Yeah. And, it, I hope, it, it, and I hope the people that we hire to do our cabinets have, have your system. Yeah. And they, and they listen to the show. I hope so too. Yeah. Because it's the business. <laughs> In both cases, it's the business of contracting and trades, yeah. because I, what I want to do is I want to create business people who just happen to run a construction company. That's my goal. Uh, and it's always been my goal for my own life. You know, you, you might say, well, Dominic, you ran a pharmacy. Are you a pharmacist? No, I'm not. And then you might say, Dominic, you, you know, you ran a, I, I ran a global uh, franchise for business coaching, believe it or not. My partner was Brian Tracy. I'm okay. not sure if you've ever heard of Brian or read his books. And the ultimate uh, goal setting uh, he's the guru and I, I follow him and, and I, I love the guy. Yeah, yeah. He's great. Yeah. So he had, uh, years ago, he had started a franchise company called focal point business coaching. Uh -huh. And I bought that from him. And, uh, when I bought it, he had six franchisees and when I sold it, it took me about 13 years, but I sold it and we got up to 237 franchisees around the world. Nice. Back to priority. What do we need to do? Who do we need to be? How do we grow? How do we add the right people? How do we, you know, how do we grow strategically, but then tactically what needs to happen today? 
So we keep coming back to those themes, right? Come back mm-hmm. to the power of focus, the ability to say no to some things, even though they might seem like a fire burning now, we've got to do something else first and those priorities have to happen. Yeah. And, you know, business owners, a lot of them will say, well, I'm in, I'm in shoes or I'm in pharmaceuticals, but what real, really yeah. they are, they're marketers, they're marketers of the service or the yeah, products right. that they, that they're providing. And so, uh, a lot of, uh, some of the, the clients that I teach, uh, and one in particular, they, uh, they don't really think marketing is fun at all. And they don't really want to do that stuff. Yet it's totally important, like like the other client who said, when I reach out, I get clients. Like, yeah. okay, you have Magic. to do those things. So yeah. how do we make it fun? So for those, especially for those who really don't want to do that kind of stuff. It seems like it's a lot of busy work. Maybe they're doing the wrong things, but yeah. what makes it fun? You know, I, I can't answer that question because if, it, if for instance, let's take marketing because you brought that up. If marketing is not fun, but you realize that it's needed, mm-hmm. maybe you're really good at accounting or maybe you're really good at operations. Yeah then hire somebody and manage them properly. Let them know what your values are. Let them really understand your ideal client. Marketing really comes down to answering your best customer's biggest question. So this, this lady that you had in your coaching group who said, you know, I reached out and I got some clients. She, she knows the language. She understands the problems they're trying to yeah. figure out. And obviously she's able to answer that, which is why they became a client. It's the same for all of us. When you understand your client's needs better than they do, they know you have the answers. So now if you don't like marketing, that's fine. I don't like bookkeeping. So I hire somebody. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to go try and get great at bookkeeping. What a waste of my time. I'm yeah. never, ever, ever in this world going to be the world's best bookkeeper. I don't even want to be. So my solution is, well, I still need it. I'm going to go get one. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I'd like to coach my clients to, to work in the sweet spot. In other words, stay in your lane. Yeah. So if there are things that you don't want to do, then, then hire them out with a VA or a, a part-time person or a full-time person, depending on where you're at in your growth uh, level. But even if you're, even if you're bootstrapping, you still need to have marketing to feed, to feed you clients. Yeah. The clients are the lifeblood blood of, your, of your business and you got to keep them. You got to, you know, you got to keep them and you got to service them. And yeah. if that's what you're really good at, then you've got to have some extra help. Even if you have to go into, into, uh, maybe into the red a little bit, uh, but you got to do the right thing out of it, to yeah. get out of it. Right. Yeah. Isn't that true? It's, it's a mindset thing. You know, I don't know if, if anybody out there has read a book called the E-Myth Revisited by Gerber. It's an old yeah. book. Yeah. Um, it's an old book, but that by no means means that it's not relevant. The reason I'm saying it's an old book is because it, it has stood the test of time. And in the e-myth, he talks about the entrepreneur mindset, the manager mindset, and the technician mindset. Mm-hmm. And if we keep ourselves stuck in the technician mindset, so the shoe person that runs a shoe company selling shoes, yeah. or in the case of the book, a woman that loves to bake pies, who opens a bakery. Yeah. Uh, in, the, in the case of the contractors who listen to my show, let's say they're roofers or cabinet makers and they just want to make cabinets. That's fine. But at some point, you've got to grow. And so don't limit yourself by saying, but I can't because dot, dot, dot. I'm, I'll smile, <laughs> but I do not want to hear it. We're going to find a way. So we need to change the way we're, we have to ask ourselves a different question. And the question, I don't know what your question is going to be, but whatever you're hearing right now in the show saying, but Paul, I can't hire a marketing person, but you don't understand, but I can't afford that. Change that question to how can I? Yeah. What get needs a to happen person? so that I can? Exactly. That's the entrepreneur question. That's the mindset that takes us beyond just selling shoes and being a business person who happens to run a shoe store, who happens to run a bakery, who happens to run a a cabinet shop. Yeah. And Brian uh, Brian Tracy teaches a um, a technique called mind storming, not brain, Mm -hmm. not brainstorming. It's called mind storming. And uh, which I really love to employ that, especially when you need to say, okay, I'm stuck with, I'm stuck right here. I don't like marketing. I can't, I really can't afford it. And so you, st- you start asking, well, what are 20, 20 things, 20 questions I can ask around this? Uh, yeah. You know, how can I make this happen? Well, I could do this. I could do that. And once you get past maybe nine or 10 of those questions, it starts to get pretty hard, but that's when the gold starts to happen. Yeah. And then f- 
finally, and don't disqualify. Well, this is the uh, mind storming exercise. Don't disqualify your questions. Don't don't disqualify your ideas until you've got twenty right. on the page. That's right. Uh, because uh, because you'll you'll disqualify that and you won't get that gold that you're mining for. And eventually, you're going to come up with something that's hey, that is actually not a bad idea. And especially if you have a mastermind or a coach to help you through that process, you're going to discover, uh, you're going to discover something that, that just might work and, and get you into that, into that growth stage that you're looking for. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I love the E-Myth book and I, I remember listening to it back in the, uh, in the eighties, uh, when I was traveling, going to uh, one of our distribution centers in, in, uh, yeah. in North Carolina and, uh, and I had, his tape, his cassette tape. This is how okay. long. Okay. Wow. Listening to Michael Gerber uh, and going about working uh, on your business instead of working in your business, which is like the technician that you're talking That's about. That's right. Yeah. Working on your business as the CMO or the CFO or the CEO uh, or the uh, the HR person. Uh, you you have all those roles, no matter if you're a solo entrepreneur or you're just a, a small team. You still have to cover those roles and you have to, like you said, you've got to do the accounting. You've got to, you've got to count the money. You've got to, it market, to get you've, done, got to yeah. you've got to sell and all those things. So uh, I really, really, uh, that book made a, a big impact on me uh, early on. It's, so, I, I call it the, the most painful book I've ever read oh. because when I read it, my wife and I were living in a two bedroom townhouse, very small cramped space, you know, but you're just starting out in your marriage. And, so I'm pacing in our living room and our living room was not that big, but I was pacing in the living room and she was like, what are you doing? Because I would take two steps and then I would close the book and I would pound my head against it. Like, and then I would open up the book and keep reading it and because he just described me to yeah. a T in that book. And so I kept reading it and then closing the book and beating myself with the head and then open it again. I'm like, okay, what else you got buddy? Cause it's so accurate. I, when you're, when you're in growth mode, I, I don't care if you're doing $20 million today or you're doing $200,000 in sales today, the attitude that we bring, the mindset that we bring is what's going to take us to the next level. And the ability, one of the things that, that we teach our, our students or our clients is we're always going to face bottlenecks or hurdles or obstacles in our business. Yeah. And we're not going to accept them. We're going to go over them, around them, through them. We're going to redefine it so it suits our purposes, but what we will not allow to happen is for bottlenecks to hold us back. They can't. They're not allowed. So going into it with that attitude, bottlenecks cannot hold me back. I can redefine things to make that bottleneck work in my favor. I've done it every single time and I continue to reinvent myself, which by the way is why in your intro, I had this wacky background. This guy's been in pharmaceuticals, real estate, global franchising, business coaching. My life changed when I became a business coach. That's when I, I, I became a business coach because I sucked at business. And I started learning and taking courses and reading books. And the natural progression became one day somebody said, you know, why don't you become a business coach? And I thought, yeah, if I became a business coach, I'd figure out the simple solutions to turning around a company. And I'll bet you I could apply it to my own. And so I did. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what, what does a business owner do when they find they're, they're a technician and they, they really need to break out and, and be working on their business? What, what can they do? First of all, I think the thing, can I tell you what I did? Cause I can't tell everybody what they need to do. Yeah. I had to have enough ego to set my ego aside because the thing that was holding me back for a long time was me saying, I'll figure it out. I don't know for you, Paul, and, and and I don't know for everybody, but I'm always the person that other people come to for answers or solutions. Mm -hmm. uh, in the contracting trades, those are the people that other their friends call and say, "Hey, this is broken," or "Hey, can you help me with this?" You know, they're the fixer. And so to reach out and say, "I kind of need somebody to give me some," I don't even want to say the word help. No, <laughs> right? I just need a. We don't want to. I'm not here to help anybody. I just want to show you a different path. I want to stand beside you as your business coach and point out the obstacles in the future that you, that you may not have considered. And so for anybody listening, we all have our own path, but you know, go find somebody that you trust who has the intent to help you. So just as an example, the person who's selling shoes to the shoe store, 
like the wholesaler who's selling shoes to the shoe store, they're not going to be a good resource for you because their intent is to sell you more shoe. shoes. Yeah. The lady who runs the bakery, if I use the e-myth example, the, the company that sells her pie crusts or baking equipment, their intent is to sell her baking equipment, right? Yeah, right? You have to actually find somebody who's not trying to sell you something, who really truly wants to show you other tools and techniques. And, and you know what? If you look hard enough, you'll find somebody. Yeah. That's a good tip. Yeah. You mentioned your, your podcast. Mm-hmm. Tell us a little bit about that, who you serve and, and, uh, and if that, how long you've been doing it and, and why are you doing it? <laughs> you know, okay, actually, can I tell you why I'm doing it? Cause you mentioned family guy, fam, yeah. like that I'm a family man. Yeah. So when I was running the franchise, I, uh, you know, we had over 200 franchisees and one day we got a phone call from four franchisees. They wanted a conference call with the owners. When you're running a franchise, that's not a good phone call. You, that sounds like class action lawsuit time. So you don't, yeah. that's, that's not a, not a good day in the office. So we get on the phone and what happened is these four guys had gotten together and they were some of our top franchisees. They owned massive territories. They had other, uh, lots of units. They were successful guys in our system. And they actually said, Hey, we'd like to buy into the company. We like what you're doing. We like the direction you're taking. We'd like to have more say. And if you guys are looking for money, we'd love to invest. So it was opposite of what we were concerned about. Huh. What a great day, right? <clears throat> but we said no. And the reason we said no is the company wasn't ready to be sold. We knew that there were more systems and processes we had to fix. Even though we were at 200 units, most, by the way, most franchise companies do not get past 50 franchisees. Mm-hmm. And I'd built it to over 200. So that gives you a sense on the growth plane. Yeah. Anyways, I go home that night for dinner and we're sitting around the dinner table, as I hope most people do. The key to having a good family is just spend some time eating dinner together. Exactly. No devices. <clears throat> so my wife says, hey, honey, how did, work, how did it go at work today? And I said, well, pretty good. Somebody offered to buy the business. Oh my God, yeah, are you going to sell it? Because it's been tough slogging for a while. I said, no, we're not going to sell it. Blah, blah, blah. But then I said, <clears throat> so next week I'm traveling again. I'm going to be flying down to San Diego. You know what I'm going to do? Is I'm going to leave Sunday night after the kids are in bed. But I'll come back Thursday. It's almost like I was never gone. I'll be here for Friday. And sitting next to my wife is my son. And he didn't say anything, but he crunk. I just saw him crink in his skin. His shoulders dropped. And I thought, what am I doing? What am I doing really? And so I walked in the next day to my partner and said, I'm selling. Because it didn't align with my values anymore. So that I decided wow. that I needed to reinvent myself, which I'm happy to do. I've done it many times. As you mentioned in my bio, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. I don't really need handrails. I will go and create my own path in this world. I love business coaching. I'm the luckiest guy you've ever met. I'm doing what I was born to do, being a business coach and applying what I've learned. And so I thought, well, I really like speaking, but I don't like traveling. I don't like being away from my family. So I started the podcast. Nice. I can still speak and I don't have to get on a plane. Right. It, and it's your show, so you can do whatever the heck you want, right? <laughs> There's a little bit of that too. Yeah. You got yeah, me there. That's great. And I get to meet the greatest people in the world, other guests. So I invite who I want on the show. And other people call me that don't meet my values. And I don't have to say anything about that, but you can guess who those people may be. I'm like, I'm not giving you a voice on my show. I think you're wacky. And that wacky doesn't fly here. So on my show, we talk about real stuff. My audience is, is uh, typically men 35 to 65 who run construction companies. Hmm. So you know who my audience would be and who I would say no to. I like that. I like it. Being a, being a podcast host, uh, can be, uh, very, very fulfilling. Uh, yeah. It can be, uh, and you, like you said, I've been meeting some fabulous people, some great guests and, uh, you know, it's, it's just, a, it's a great networking tool and just, you know, you get some free coaching, you know, you get, you bring that, bring that person who's an expert in finance that you might not be able mm-hmm. to know. And you can ask them about maybe problems that your clients are having or that you're having. You don't have to tell them that. But yeah. you still can get some some straight actionable stuff from yeah. from doing that. So I, I recommend uh, doing being becoming a podcast host if you're not already. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and and if you're not going to be a podcast host, go listen to a good podcast. You know, I try hard to bring my, my job is to build a platform for contractor wealth, and so I bring guests that my audience may not think about. We just had a, a, a CFO, a chief financial officer, 
mm-hmm. talk about the importance of a work in progress report. That doesn't sound exciting to most of your audience at all, but no, when no. you're in contracting and you've got projects that span a long time and it's impacting your cash flow, mm-hmm. that work in progress report's pretty darn enticing. Well, where would you yeah. ever get a chance to hear from a CFO how that works, what to do, what to watch for? Yeah. Except, you know, in, in my case, a show like mine. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're a business owner, uh, which I hope you are, if you're listening to this show, uh, you should consider if you don't want it to be a, a podcast host, you definitely should be a podcast guest. It's a great way to, yeah. to get your message out there, to show your expertise and, and to get visibility, have people look at your offers and things like that. And, uh, you know, just become a thought leader in your, in your space. Can I, can I add one more thing to that? Yeah. You, you and I both know Brian Tracy. And so this, I learned from Brian Tracy and, and he said so many wise things and guided me in so many ways. But one of the things that he has said, I'm sure you've heard, is turn your car into a university. Yeah. Because if you have an hour a day to listen to a podcast or an audiobook, and then you do the math, some of you are already paying to send your kids to college. They're going to, you know, for one semester credit, they're doing, let's say, 14, 16 hours. So for every 16 hours you listen to podcasts like yours or listen to an audiobook, for every 16 hours, it's the equivalency of one university credit. So don't waste your time. Listen, I understand sports radio is interesting and exciting, and you might listening to might like listening to um, morning, you know, I call it burp fart radio, like just, just <laughs> senseless radio back in the background. But you could also choose to use your time just a little bit differently and listen to shows on economics, marketing, finance, personal development, mindset, sales, operations, and imagine what your life would be like at the end of a year, if you spent one hour every day, or what would that be? There's 250 working days. So 250 hours a year working on the business of business in your mind. Incredible change. Incredible. Yeah, that alone, that alone is gold right there from, from, this, uh, from this episode that we're talking about. That's uh, fabulous. Spend time in your car. If you're spending time in your car, listen to things that are going to enrich your mind versus things that are going to destruct or deconstruct your mind, destroy your mind, yeah, destroy your mind. Yeah. And, and I like that you, uh, we've mentioned a couple of times, husband and father, family, man, the family guy, uh, you've done some, uh, you, you gave a TEDx talk on how to inspire your family using business tools. Uh, that's pretty interesting to me. Uh, I've got, uh, between my wife and I, we have uh, six kids and, uh, most of them grown and, uh, and, you know, they struggle with the finances and keeping jobs and job hopping and all these other things yeah. that, that kids do these days. And uh, especially these days, my gosh, I, I think my, my son has had, one of my sons had more jobs than I've had in my entire lifetime. But, uh, and he's only 26. Hey, at least he keeps working. He, I know he's great right. at getting, he's great at getting jobs. Good for him. <laughs> he just needs to learn how to keep them. Yeah. But uh, I think he just hasn't found the right one yet. The right but, one, sure. But anyhow business tools in the family, uh, the family domain. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned the Ted talk. I did it a while ago and, uh, you know, the title isn't very good. So some Ted talks get millions of views, but I did it. I did it in reaction to my, my daughter got a cell phone and keep in mind, my daughter was going to a private Catholic school. Huh? And so you'd think it'd be a nice environment where everybody's got, you know, similar values, but her life went into the toilet. As soon as she got a cell phone, because the girls had a chat going and it started getting pretty nasty. And, Mm -hmm. uh, one of the girls, um, said something, my daughter stepped in to defend her friend. And then all of the vitriol got, uh, uh, focused on her. And so how do you deal with that? My daughter was walking around like a bomb had gone off in her brain and we couldn't figure out what was going on. So that's what the Ted talks about. What we did as a family to try and work our way through that and, it's, it's going to sound overly simplistic if you don't hear the whole story on the TED. It's on YouTube, so it's easy to find. But, yeah. but we, you know, we did is we sat down and we redid our goals. But they were just kids. So how do you do goals with kids? Well, we did vision boards. Mm-hmm. Like pictures, cutting things out like an arts and crafts event. Because you have to make, the only thing that matters when you're trying to accomplish something with a team is what the team is going to resonate with. Right. Mm-hmm. And so our team in that case was kids, like two little kids at Catholic school. So we did arts and crafts. We cut pictures out of magazines and make what you want your world to look like. And it really worked well. It really, it worked really, really well. 
And so the vision burn was the tool. That was the, that was the tool. But the but goal setting about, was the business that really was the, was the, was the underlying outcome. Yeah. Yeah. And now I imagine you, you took what you learned from Brian Tracy and goal setting uh, to help guide you in your, <laughs> to help yeah. guide you in that, in that. Oh exercise. yeah. Yeah. But That's again, cool. you have to amend it to your audience, right? You're not going to talk to your kids at the ages they were at grade four and seven at the time, grade four and grade seven, yeah. you know, they're little kids, right? So, but it still worked. And we still talk about those vision boards and they're still hanging in their rooms and we revisit them. And yeah. And are the, is the, are the worlds turning into their vision? They are. Yeah. My daughter uh, went on to get into the college of her dreams and art college and she's doing extremely well there and she also became a lifeguard not only that but she now teaches lifeguarding courses so she's you know excelling as much as she can and and listen i understand everybody thinks their kids are the greatest so of please course. through the filter of i think my kids are the greatest um <laughs> and my son uh, wants to play high level lacrosse and he does all of the things he needs to do to have a shot so let's not assume he's going to make it but he he does the 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 basic tools that you need he practices extra he's on multiple teams he goes and works out on his own without us telling him so those are the things you see that are going to lead to something in the future i don't know what but they're they're steps in the right direction yeah one of my mentors um a colleague of mine he he's not the most talented he's not he's not the the he's not a great speller or writer uh, or communicator but he's a hard worker. He's persistent. Yeah. He will out outwork you. He will outwork you. And he's very successful in business. And, and he's like, he's like Michael Jordan, you know, of business. He's uh, he will outwork you. And so having that work ethic is super important these days. And, and I think a lot of, a lot of uh, people may have lost sight of that. And yeah. I, I think hard work is, is, uh, is, is good and healthy. And I yeah. think that, I think that was the way the world was established that we are to work, that we are to work for, uh, for the common good to produce profit, to produce, produce good in the communities, in our families and et cetera. So I hope you agree with that. Uh, I think that's, that's just the, the truth. That's exactly what I agree through. Yeah. 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 So we're, um, what else? Oh, uh, yeah. One more question. What was the most important lesson you've learned in business? I know we've covered a lot of them already. Oh, it's, that's, you know, that it's a good question, but it's such a difficult one because I think it's been a combination yeah. of lessons I've had to learn and relearn again and again. I'll tell you some of the failures that I see around me that make me shake my head might be the way I'd approach that. If you, if I give you my word, I'm going to do it. And I, I learned that from my parents. You know, my parents came to this country with nothing, like nothing. My dad tells me stories about getting spit on when he went to apply for jobs. Nothing. They came with nothing. Mm -hmm. But you ask that guy to do something for you, he's going to do it if he says yes. And so that passes on to me. If I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. And so the, the, some of us call that servant leadership uh, or service before self. Those kinds of things, you know, you don't need a fancy word to just do the thing, right? Right. But I, I would say that uh, I find people not living up to their word. That's very disappointing. Yeah, I'm glad that you mentioned that because one of the things that I've noticed in some of the companies I've worked for in the past and uh, as companies grow, uh, a lot of times they, they start out with that heart, that, yeah. that love of, of the, their employees and their, their clients. And there's, you know, there's strong relationships and, and this this theme runs through a, a lot of the guests that i've spoken with on this show uh and and what i've learned is as they grow sometimes those that initial warm and fuzzy i'll call it but it's really the the, the values and morals of the of the leadership that that founded that company they get yeah. lost along the way and they they sometimes get exchanged for shiny and they get and for profit and yeah. for uh you know personal gain but not necessarily um you know, the good of the community, the common good. And so what are some of the things that you've, you've noticed and that people, that business owners can help prevent ha that happening? Yeah. So this is a fuzzy one, but it, you've hit on something that's extremely important is that your, your values matter. My values matter. Yeah. The thing is I have to train my team on what the values are. And then I have to actually make my team 
out of people who believe in my values. So, um, you know, the reason value sounds like something a business coach would say. So people are rolling their eyes right now. They're like, mm -hmm. oh, here comes yeah. the, here you're, comes you're the lucky charms again. part of this conversation. <laughs> right. But I'll, but I'll tell you the values are the glue that hold everything together. So when I'm not there, when nobody can ask me, what do I do in this situation? Doing the right thing. What does doing the right thing mean in yeah. your company? Now with our clients, we walk them through, I wouldn't say an exhaustive process, but it, the core of everything we do is around the values of the client. You know, I had, um, got a client who runs a very, very successful millwork company. And so a millwork company makes furniture. Um, yeah. so when you walk into these really high end stores, I'm, I can't say the store. But when you walk into a very, very, very high-end store, all of the fixtures are made by a certain company. That company is one of my clients. Wow. That company is very strong in their faith. I'll just leave it at that. We all, I think we all understand what that means. Yeah. And they're having trouble with their foreman. We couldn't figure it out. There was friction with the foreman. And the foreman would say things like, well, I can't go do that install because I don't really like being around kids. Like You could probably already guess where this is going. I can't go do that job because I, I don't really like children. Well, it turns out, and I, some people already know where this is going. It turns out he had a charge against him, but he said it to the world. Like, I don't like kids. And the, op the opposite is actually true. Yeah. I don't want to talk too much more about that, but the friction came because they're so strong in their faith and so grounded in their values. They couldn't figure out why they just didn't get along with this foreman. And it turns out he was completely the opposite of their values. And when the truth finally came out, they were torn for a very short moment. What do we do? But when we, in our coaching said, what are the values of this business? It became very clear what to do. Yeah. So I, I hope I've talked around this enough. I don't even want to give it the benefit of what the situation was, but it becomes so clear. If you're not on, if, if you don't live up to our values, you don't get to be on our team. End of story. Yeah, it's going to be hard in our company. Yeah, we're going to lose leadership. Yeah, you might be the most technically skilled and brilliant person for that trade in 100 miles. Guess what? I'll go find somebody else that does meet my values and who's only 60% of your technical skill and ability, but I will not change my values. Right. Amen. That's Amen. The right answer to that one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it's, it can be tempting. It's, it's hard. It's not easy. It's not easy to be in, you know, there are a number of, uh, of companies like Chick-fil-A and, uh, I, I can't think of all the, all of them. Yeah, off but the even Starbucks, like there's uh, a, there's a way to operate. 1-800-GOT-JUNK yeah. is a, is a past client of mine. They have values. They have values we see when their truck drives by that we don't even know about, but we, but we just get it. And then we align with that or we don't. Yeah. Hobby Lobby was the other one I was going to There you go. Yeah. But yeah. But, but it's hard and you get criticized. You, there, you know, if you're a pioneer, you're going to get arrows in your back. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And in you, people are not going to like you. They're going to, they're going to slander you or whatever. That's okay. Not everybody's your perfect client. Have at it. Not everybody's know how it goes. the yeah. right person to, to work with you. And, uh, it, you should stand for those. So I, I appreciate that little, that little sidebar that we did. Yeah. There's, so, can I share with you a, um. A saying that I got from my rancher buddies. Yeah, sure. Um, if you stand for nothing, you fall for anything. Yeah. Right. Now you got to say that with a rancher's drawl. I won't do it, but <laughs> you stand for nothing. You fall for anything. So what do you it, stand for? That's the answer. What, what does my family stand for? What, what did my family stand for when I said I'm selling a multi-million dollar global company to go start? I don't know what, because my son shrunk in his skin. Yeah. Values matter because nobody's going to write on my tombstone. Dom was great. He made it to multiple meetings in all, other cities and flew all the time. The first, it doesn't fit on a tombstone. And second, it doesn't <laughs> matter. It doesn't. When it says beloved father and husband, it better mean it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, this has been great. I appreciate it. Uh, we're about at the end of our time, but Dom, before we, before we go, what are three things that our listeners and viewers can do to put these ideas into action? There's a lot of them. <clears throat> there is. Uh, you know, I was taking notes as we were talking because we started on time management. We started by talking about have a plan. We went off into a bunch of, you ask excellent questions. So maybe we Thank didn't you. follow the original we didn't. plan. No. Uh -huh. 
But, you know, there's a tool that I give people and it doesn't matter. You don't have to be in construction for this tool to work. Can I share it with everybody if they want it? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's a very simple tool. It's called the Healthy Wealthy Wise Planner. Now, this is a, it's a, a download that we give people on my show. Uh, and it really becomes popular, if that's the right word, at the beginning of the year when people are saying, I'm going to accomplish this this year. Yeah. So if anybody wants it, just shoot me a text and say, healthy, wealthy, wise. And uh, it was, my cell is uh, 315-903-7853. And just say healthy, wealthy, wise. It's a three or maybe four page document, but the functional page is one page. And what it does is it, it creates a grid, healthy, wealthy, wise against personal, business, and finance. So imagine that that grid of, of three, three on the, the left column and three across the top, what does it mean to be healthy in your family? What does it mean to be wise in your family? What does it mean to be healthy in business, et cetera, et cetera? So mm -hmm. the cross-reference is really important. And, and this is what I do for my, uh, for my audience is I say, if you print that off and you go to a coffee shop, take a picture of yourself working on that piece of paper as a selfie and then text it to me to the same number and I'll buy your coffee. And so I usually send people a $5 Amazon gift card, but that's my commitment. I want you to do it so bad. I want to buy your coffee because, you know, you and I host podcasts. We're, I don't get to see you in the audience. Yeah. You know, you might be in Tuscaloosa or you might be in Toronto. I don't know where you are, but send me that picture. It's a little joke between us. And is it worth five bucks to me to buy your coffee to get you to do that work? the rest of my life, I would do that. If I can really change somebody's approach and give them the right tools. So that's, that's, I think that would be the most appropriate thing from today. And that's 315-903-7853, correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah. But then make sure you say healthy, wealthy, wise, because I get you know, texts from other people from past podcasts and I want to make sure that somebody gets the right tool. But that's, I think that would be the best summation of what we did today. What's the big picture of who you are? And what you want to accomplish as a, as a business leader, as a, as a human, as a family member, all of those things really nicely filtered down on one page. Yeah. And, and we tend to, sometimes we, uh, especially when we're trying to grow and we're, we're in that technician mode and we're doing all these things. Yeah. We sometimes forget that that family is so important. And those, there's, there's more to it than just what you have to do today. There's more to it. There's more to it. And we mentioned silence and, and those kinds of things. Those are yeah. super important. And so reflect on that, on that exercise that he, that he gives you and, uh, and see what you can do to move that needle so that, so that those are all nicely aligned. Yeah. So, uh, well, thank you again. We have, you also have a free resource, uh, for people. Can you tell us about that? That's the, uh, the profit tool that tool belt. Yeah. The pro so, you know what, that one is the, how to find and fix your eight profit leaks. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so when we, when we talk about it as a business, people might think, well, this Dom guy only deals with contractors and I sell shoes right? or yeah. I have a landscaping company or, you know, home cleaning, whatever. It doesn't matter what your business is. It really doesn't. You might be a resume writer for other people, but if you run a business, you have profit leaks. And the sad part or the hard part about profit leaks is profit only comes after you paid for everything else. Yeah. And so to think that you've got leaks in your business, uh, you said you have three cats. Yeah. Have you ever tried to give your cat a pill? Oh, <laughs> what does your arm look like after that? Well, I can tell you, <laughs> but my wife does it and she's good at it. <laughs> oh yeah. That's but, right. I but, forgot. She's got, she, but she's got scratches too. Yeah. Right. And she's got the scars to prove it. So the, yeah. it's actually a good analogy because have you ever heard of death by a thousand cuts? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's what the profit leaks are like. You've already brought the money into your company, but it's just kind of oozing out and you lose track of it. And so we have a document that's how to find and fix the eight profit leaks in your business. And if, again, if you want it, just text me, I'm happy to send it off. It, the cell phone number is the same, 315-903-7853, but then say profit leaks. And then I know which one you're asking for. And it makes it easy for us to just email it off to you. Yeah. And you can also go to profittoolbelt.com and get it, correct? That's right. Yeah. You just yeah. go there and get it. Well, sir, thank you, Dominic. For, uh, for coming today. I've enjoyed our conversation and, and you're right. We went way off the rails, but uh, that's great. I'm glad Hopefully that we valuable. Did. I think that's, that's, what, that's what we should be doing is having just a real conversation about what we can do to be more, become more profitable and more uh, efficient and uh, happier doing business with our, with our businesses and with our families and with our faith and, and everything in between. 
Yeah. Love it. Well, thank you. Well, thanks again. And uh, remember, faith and action go hand in hand. So keep the pedal to the metal. Until next time on the Lead Machine Growth Show, I'm Paul Guyon and Dominic Rubino. Thank you, brother, for coming. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for tuning into the Lead Machine Growth Show with Paul Guyon, where we show you how to tackle your tech, master your message, and design your dream so that you can transform your vision into reality. Remember to visit our website at www.leadmachinegrowthshow.com and enjoy even more great episodes like this one. Again, while you're here, subscribe to us via your favorite network. We look forward to seeing you next time on the Lead Machine Growth Show. I mean...